Welcome. Today with here, we have with us uh, Gajan Panambalam. Uh, thank you for being here today. Um, in this interview, we'd like to focus on the external and internal aspects affecting the Tamil uh, national question on the island. Uh, you yourself are a third generation leader of the Old Ceylon um, Tamil Congress and the Tamil National People's Front uh, formed in 2010. So you, of course, are well versed in articulating the Tamil national question. Um, it seems that equal to war crimes, there is also something of an outlook crime um, existing in the world powers, uh, which was long responsible for the genocide and the ongoing structural genocide. Um, is there any political program in your party for edifi um, edifying this outlook, or um, if not possible, um, confronting it instead? Um, yeah, I mean, as far as our party is concerned, <coughs> Our view has always been that uh, uh, the international community as such, whichever aspect of it, whichever grouping uh, that you want to look at, uh, when it comes to Sri Lanka is fully versed with regards to what the, <coughs> what the Tamil people face. Uh, and that uh, since the departure of the British uh, in Sri Lanka, there has been a systematic uh, genocide that has been taking place. Uh, is something that is not, it, it, it is not something that the, whichever, whichever member of the international community you may belong to, <clears throat> it is not something that uh, those particular actors don't realize. I mean, they're not stupid, right? I mean, this matter has been going on for the last at least 65 years. Um, all Tamil leaders, regardless of which party affiliations they come from, uh, have at various uh, crucial moments uh, not only told our own people uh, and described what is happening to the Tamil people as genocide, uh, they have at very crucial stages come out with very powerful written um, documentation <coughs> in the form of resolutions, in the form of party declarations, uh, in the form of uh, declarations in the sense of uh, uh, the entirety of the Tamil people endorsing, uh, very clearly stating that this is genocide. So uh, that the Sri Lankan state has been uh, pursuing that genocide is something that uh, is well known. It's, it's, it's not a new phenomenon. Uh, degrees have varied. Its, it's um, execution has varied in various ways. Right? Uh, so when, when you have international actors who are not dumb, who are not ignorant, who are fully worst uh, with what is going on, continuing to support a state, uh, despite what is happening, as far as we are concerned, it is not because of ignorance. So when there is no ignorance, how much you can do by way of trying to convince them, I think is a question mark. I don't believe that this is a question of lack of uh, knowledge. And then the question is, it, then it becomes quite obvious that there is a certain agenda that's running. Uh, and our party's position has always been that um, international actors that back the Sri Lankan state uh, back it blindly because they need to pursue their own interests. And if that happens, uh, that means that when genocide is taking place, and certainly a structural genocide taking place today, uh, then those actors also, uh, by virtue of them doing it with the knowledge, are complicit. Uh, so, so our view is that then you, you, it's not a question of trying to convince them to do otherwise. This is a question of needing to look at them as being part of the issue. And in that case, then we have to come up with some sort of strategy to counter that. And it's certainly not going to be through education. It is something that has to come through struggle. And it is something, I'm not sure whether I will, <clears throat> I don't, I don't, I, I'm not sure whether I'll use the term confront, uh, but certainly challenge is something that I think we should do. And that is what we, th we believe as our party, uh, our role is. And do you think uh, an attitude change is possible um, through edification or through maybe not confronting but challenging um, the powers responsible for the current international outlook um, in order to have changed the way um, the Tamil question is addressed. Yeah, I mean, I mean if you take, uh, <coughs> if, you, if you look at uh, what, what has happened in the recent past uh, in, in, in Sri Lanka, our view has always been that there is a geopolitical, um, you know, there is a geopolitical struggle uh, that is taking place with Sri Lanka at its centre. Um, it is a struggle that is uh, happening between primarily, the primary actors of it have been um, 
the US dominated West, India and China. Right? So it is this a grouping that is struggling in order to in some way get leverage over the Sri Lankan state. Um, <clears throat> now in that sort of uh, scenario, uh, in order to in order to in bring the Sri Lankan state into their particular spheres of influence and their own uh, way of thinking, uh, these various actors have used you know, various leverage on the Sri Lankan state. <clears throat> and one of the primary leverage that these actors have had, uh, and the most probably the most effective leverage that they've had, is the Tamil issue. Um, so you will have, at various stages, uh, actors, so, so for example, in the 80s, it was a time during the Cold War. It was a time when India was aligned with the Soviet Union. <clears throat> and when, uh, when the United States was showing a lot of interest in Sri Lanka, uh, there, was, uh, there, was, uh, there, was, there was this Cold War based around Sri Lanka also. Uh, and the primary actors was the US and India. Uh, and at that stage, when it suited India's purpose, the Tamil struggle was used as leverage the, the Tamil liberation struggle was armed, it was strengthened in order to create leverage over the Sri Lankan state. Uh, and when the Sri Lankan state came and fell in line in the form of uh, coming and signing the Indo Lanka Accord, uh, through which, through its annexures, India was able to secure its interests, uh, that very same actor, that is India, uh, basically told the Tamil people, uh, now it's time to pack up and go home. You know, forget your struggle. Uh, your issues now must uh, be put to rest. And there should be no room for struggle. Mm, so that scenario is there. When it suits them, they have used us as leverage. When it suits them, they keep quiet. And they do the complete opposite. They, when, they, when it suited them, you, they used the fact that the Tamils were being oppressed, that there was a genocide that was going on. The Indian Prime Minister, several Prime Ministers, Mrs. Indra Gandhi, Rajiv Gandhi have at various times used the word genocide in their own parliaments to describe what's happening to the Tamils way back in the 80s, right? So this is not out of ignorance. My main point is it's not out of ignorance. Those very same actors, when they signed the Indo Lanka Accord, turned around and say, uh, nowadays everything is okay, you just have to get on. But we know since then that process has continued against the Tamil people. So I think the only way we can move forward is by realizing what is happening, educate our people primarily, because our people is that leverage. They need our, our politics on the one hand, they need to contain our politics on the other hand, so it revolves around our politics, and for as long as we understand what's going on, if we can educate our people sufficiently, we believe that we can actually challenge them in their own game. And through challenging them, we can create leverage ourselves. I think that is the most important thing that we need to do. And if we do it, I believe that we can be successful. So do you believe that changing the out this outlook is going to be the major issue in future decades of Tamil po politics? Yes. I think, I, think that is, uh, I think that is key. Um, uh, I, I, do I don't believe, I mean, there is a, there is a tendency uh, amongst, say, those uh, our detractors within the Tamil polity itself, uh, who would try and make out that when we take up a particular position uh, that is critical of, say, for example, uh, India or the West with regards to how they deal with the Sri, uh, the, the, how they deal with Sri Lanka and also how they deal uh, with the Elam Tamils, that uh, particularly when we talk of uh, them being, uh, you know, criticize them with regards to how they deal with the Elam Tamil issue, uh, there is a tendency to try and point out that, you know, this is black and white in the sense that, okay, if you're criticizing, then you're anti this, anti that. I think that, you know, it's not going to last long. I think for, for as long as if we, can, if we can show our people what the truth is, if we can educate them what actually is happening, uh, I don't think this issue of we are anti this or anti that is going to matter. What is going to matter is that we have interests, those interests are permanent, and that we will not compromise them in, under any circumstances. And if we can have actors who can recognize that, who can recognize the fact that we also have interests and that we will not compromise on those interests, then I think the relationship that can, we can build uh, with those very same actors will be on a much more meaningful 
and a deeper uh, footing. Uh, we are committed to that position. While you claim self-determination for the Iri Lemt animals, what is the political program in preparing them as a nation to rule themselves, especially for bringing political culture and um, building infrastructures and at the grassroots level, as well as at higher levels? Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, if we, I mean, we, we, we believe that we are a nation in our own right. Uh, and and uh, as, as such, by, ex by that extension, we believe that we are entitled to the right to self-determination. Those are inalienable rights, right? So we, th those are not rights that can be compromised under any circumstances. As to what form that right to self-determination should take, what, what, answer, what way in which we are going to uh, exercise those rights is, is up to our people. Our issue is that we need to educate our people, create those conditions for them to, in, for them to exercise those rights. Right? Primarily, if we believe that we are a nation, then we must start behaving like a nation. If that is the case, then we have to start creating power structures in a manner where we can build a, a power center for our nation. Now, in politics, as far as I'm concerned, there are only two forms of power. Uh, one is power of arms. The other is the power of the people. Now, we are not, as a, as a democratic party that works within a democratic space, that is severely restricted within Sri Lanka because of certain legal constraints. For example, we have, we have uh, legal constraints saying that we can't we can't talk about a separate state, we can't talk about this, we can't talk about that. There is, there is, there is Prevention of Terrorism Act, which is the most draconian laws uh, that is still operative as normal laws. Um, so under those circumstances, there are certain limits to which we can work in a safe environment. But within those safe environments, uh, where, where we don't throw our people into unnecessary jeopardy, we believe still we can achieve a lot. In uh, in, in, in building these structures of a, of, a, of a nation, purely democratic, no, no one can make allegations against us with regards to our motives. Those are our rights that no one can deny. And if someone tries to deny that, then we will be in a position to expose the duplicity with these people who talk about democracy, rule of law, good governance, all these cliches. Because they are merely cliches when it comes to Tamil people. So we believe that we have to build those action plans that we can put into practice uh, through which we create a power center. And that power center can only come through people power. People power can be mobilized through mass struggle. Uh, I also believe that people power can be mobilized through creating de facto power centers. So for example, if we, in our homeland, areas that we recognize as our homeland, if we can create a situation where we have our own assembly, where and even though it is under the Sri Lankan state structure, where you have various uh, elections that take place for various institutions, when those people are elected under, albeit, a Sri Lankan state structure, those elected representatives are people of our own choice. It is the people that our people are voting in. Those people can de facto start congregating and actually discuss amongst ourselves, through which we create an assembly of our own. That's not illegal. Those spaces are there. The question is whether we can mobilize it to a point where we create sufficient leverage so that the Sri Lankan state also takes us seriously. I think that's the key. Uh, I believe that they will have to take us seriously uh, if we are prepared to actually take ourselves seriously with regards to the fact that we are a nation. Uh, thank you very much for uh, um, talking with us.